Mm, yeah. I love my HBCU. Mm. And Bob? I love it, love it. Yeah. I love it, love it. Yeah. I love my HBCU. And man. Mm. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I hope my team they won one. Mm, yeah. Man. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I tune into the SCCU Sports Lab to see if my team wanna lose. If they lost, I'm quiet as a mouth. But if they won, she tab. Uh, I'ma do the dab, yeah. Dr. Cavill, he know what he be talking about. Mike and Charles, they know what they be talking about. They compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they wanna lose. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, uh, yes sir, yes, and pay attention, boy. cause he gonna teach a lesson. Yes. Good afternoon, good evening. This is Dr. Khalil inside HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington, Charles Bishop. As you see, Mike Washington is still out on assignment, and we have the professor, visiting professor. You're gonna have to become, switch you to a clinical professor. Uh, <laughs> you, you. You does that come, man. You, you does that, up your game. Does that come with a check, Doc? Yeah, yeah, no, no. You, that's significant difference between an adjunct and a visiting professor. You know, one you get a little, little stipend. You know, these parts it's like five thousand per class. Versus the clinical, you know, you up to fifty seven, sixty five, depending on the department. So yeah, it's a little difference between twenty thousand over the. Some over two over a year versus fifty seven, you know, a little a little different. Can I can I get a little blue cross and then we might be able to talk? I'm just playing with you, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you get the blue cross. There you go. Adjunct, not so much. You don't get none of that. You don't get none of that. Adjunct, you got you got to do the Obamacare care with the adjunct. You know how to negotiate like that. Yeah. So welcome to episode two twenty six of Inside HBC Sports Lab Radio Show and Podcast. The show that's covering the sporting HBCU dash for all these HBCU sports from institutions large and small, from the NAIA to the NCAA. We share insights and information on HBC sports culture, HBCU athletic aesthetics to facilitate the story of HBCU athletic programs in the business of HBCU sports. I'm your host, Dr. Kenyatta Cavill, along with my co host, Mike Washington, Charles Bishop. We're filming from our home studios and sending a signal live, KCOH 1230 AM studios with the Texas Radio Hall of Famer in a beautiful home at Texas Southern University from Houston, Texas. Professor Bishop. Doc. You know, you you on tenure track, so, you know, <laughs> you better be writing them a <laughs> paper or something. Right. Either that, that or you got to pull in that grant money. Bro. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> that, yeah. that, grant it's, money in my life. We're starting to get some <laughs> dissertation time. So. Go well. It's <laughs> great to be back here as we uh, kick off 2022 and uh, – uh, get into it. Got a lot of stuff to get into. All right, I'm gonna start it off. I'm gonna start it off. I just want to see my opinion. I'm gonna take myself out. I'm gonna take myself out of it because people will say I'm biased. So I'm gonna ask you this question: Which is the biggest height? By the Stoke Division II coach who has ties to a HBCU, Texas Southern University, on that staff previously, or former Pro Bowl defensive back hired as Prairie View head coach, who was the interim previous and assistant coach, Bubba Mattel. Starting with you, Professor Bishop, since you're on the tenure track, uh, you say you're just going to do your dissertation first. I got you, I got you. <laughs> yeah, you bad man. Between the two, what is the biggest high? What is the biggest news of the day to you when you heard those two things? Which one's bigger? I don't know. I think it depends on the region. Uh, if you're over there, uh, over there in, in, in Georgia area, Georgia, Florida area, and about Dawson State hires uh, their first black coach, that is huge news over there. Uh, those of us over here in SWAT country from uh, Alabama over to Texas, you know, Prairie View hiring Bubba McDowell. That was big news today in the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Uh, Prairie View now uh, has made their – Interim their head coach, and then we we'll go forward with the Bubba McDowell era. Charles is so smart. He likes to play the line. You know, he's going to play right in the middle. No, Charles. Which is the bigger high? I don't want to split the coach. Which one garnered more thoughts in terms of what you've seen in regards to a professional hire, in terms of the framework 
is bigger than you. Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously on my timeline, uh, the, the news today was Bubba McDowell uh, uh, be, becoming the head coach at Prairie View, uh, especially when you take a look at Prairie View coming uh, off their uh, Swag West championship. Uh, he now takes over the reins for uh, a team that has ascended uh, to elite status over there in the Swag West with uh, those teams such as uh, Southern Grambling and UAPB. So uh, that was the big news for me today. Professor Drew? Well, I live on that side of the Mississippi, that other side of Mississippi that you were talking about, Charles, number one. Number two, I stay 45 minutes from the campus of Valdosta State University. So that is definitely a bigger hire to be, maybe not bigger, but definitely a more shocking hire of the two hires uh, for me, especially uh, having worked in Valdosta uh, once upon a time, living in that region. And, you know, I know y'all love football down in Texas, but that particular city, football is, I mean, it's God, it's King, it's Bishop, it's Buddha, it's, ev it's everything else, you know, that the, the two high schools in that city. Both of those high schools are perennial state powers here in the state of Georgia where I live at. And, of course, we know the history of Valdosta State in which they doing, you know, they won it three years ago. They were runner-ups this year. So uh, for that to happen, and then not only is he the first black head coach in Valdosta State history, but he's the first black co head coach in the Gulf South Conference. Let's take, let's, let's take that out one step, everybody. First black coach and uh, black head coach in the Gulf South Conference. So that is, from a social and cultural uh, standpoint, that is definitely a bigger story for the Texas Southern hire. It's just another ex-NFL player who's come back to an HBCU. Wow. This, this is why I love this show. We can literally, as a professor, we can do case studies live on the show. And as Charles said, you know, maybe you get an A-plus. Maybe you're going to move from the dissertation to tenure track, you, you know, skip adjunct to, prof, you know, clinical professors, AD, because you said it depends on the side of the world you live on. What is the bigger news? So to your point, touche, touche, I, I, you know, I give you a lot of credit there. That, that was interesting perspective from both of y'all and certainly valid points were made. So I'm intrigued about that. We're going to go back to you, Charles, and continue What's some other Significant news was out there today. Well, Black or College this past week. Black College Football Hall of Fame announces their 2022 class. So let's go through those uh, new members of the Black College Hall of Fame class 22. Ben Coast, tight end, Livingstone College, Donald Driver, wide receiver from Alcorn. John, big train move, running back from Morris Brown College, 1939-1941. The great Roscoe Nance, contributor, Tuskegee University, Nate Newton, offensive lineman from Florida AM. The great William Billy X, head coach Mars Brown and Prairie View A&M University, and Sammy White, wide receiver from Grambling State. Those are the, the 2022 class of the Black College Football Hall of Fame class. Fascinating, fascinating. I would be remiss if I didn't jump on before I do that. Let me um, get out here and make sure we – Talk about North Carolina Central Moons, the passing of basketball legends, Sam Jones from um, reported at abc11.com, other sources, obviously, HBC Sports, HBC Game Day. Um, quick story, my previous um, associate dean of academic affairs, a position that I currently hold in the interim role at Texas Southern University, I traveled with Dr. Cunningham to the CIAA to see the tournament. And he played with Sam Jones back in the CIAA tournament. He was an all-conference CIAA guard himself at Virginia State. He's in the Virginia State fame. And he introduced me to Sam Jones. And we literally got a chance to talk about the CIAA. And, you know, like, oh, you know, gentlemen of that nature to get together and really talk about the fond memories. It was fascinating just being able to sit at the feet, literally, of the legends, whether you're talking about legends in the CIAA Hall of Fame or in case of Sam Jones, a legend in the NBA, 
its emphases in terms of, as you know, the multiple championships, 10 championships, 10 uh, Boston Sex legend who passed uh, this past Thursday. You know, I know we had a chance to touch on it last show, but I thought it'd be well to really get a chance to in depth and tell that story to everybody in regards to the connections and the brief moment that I had to touch on what I call just in terms of as a person and certainly what he was able to do with his skills. So I wanted to share that with everybody out there, um, passing Sam Jones, the legendary. And before we move forward, uh, since we are dealing with that honorance, uh, Coppin State mourns the passing of Reggie Smith. This comes from MEAC Sports. Coppin State University Department of Athletics mourns the passing of former Eagles baseball coach, Reginald Reggie E. Smith, Smith Battle, with illness for two years in transition uh, the same day of December 30th last week um, as well. Smith was a Coppin State's head baseball coach from 1984 to 87, achieving an overall record of 46-106-1. and one. He helped transition Coppin from NIA to Division I, uh, which is a bit feeding this tough Coppin State in 1985 when the, the best season was when the Eagles went 17-28. So while his record may not speak uh, in terms of his overall performance, but he certainly – uh, was a beacon of light for Coppin State. The Eagles, significant when you talk about transitioning from NIA to NCAA um, and those type of things. So I wanted to at least make sure we remembered those gentlemen in terms of what they would get done. I'm so glad in terms of the Hall. Obviously, anytime I hear Prairie View and I'm attached to that, Coach Billy Nix, I do not think he gets the credit in terms yeah. of being what I would call um, – Obviously, I don't like to use the Mount Rushmore terminology. I use the Greenboro's four, four because I like to talk about HBCUs and the connection and the Africana perspective of uh, blackness, if you allow me to use that framework. So we're talking about four dignitary students in terms of that. Obviously, we're talking about Billy Nix and what he did for Prairie View. He is somebody that I believe uh, stands alone in terms of the top four coaches historically over a period of time. And when you match him up, you go read that story. And we talked about this the other day and then yeah. I got to do with uh, Brian in terms of chasing greatness when we were looking at saving with some of the legendary coaches. And obviously Steve Gaither, rightfully so, jumps out there in terms of that, in terms of some of those Eddie Robinson as legendary coaches. And we went back and forth and Charles got to talk about a legendary coach in the Jack State we talked about Tennessee State's legendary coaches, Southern, and oftentimes until you bring it up and you really bring it up, Billy Nix doesn't necessarily get the credit. And he had winning records, non-losing records, winning records against those uh, other recognized coaches of his time. And he coached right in the middle of that uh, four championships, five championships overall, uh, obviously had purview at the height in the 50s and 60s uh, when HBCU was probably at its greatest zenith in terms of some of the greatest players and coaches of the time. He was right there in the mix. And so because of the dip of Prairie View's history in that 80 losing streak and not maintaining that level, a lot of that gets lost. But you talk about the College Hall of Fame, he's in there. Yeah. So I'm glad that you pushed that out. With that, as we're up on the break, let's get into this break and then we'll come back and give AD a chance to maybe get us some news. And then we're going to get into some basketball talk. Basketball in the hardwood is kicked off. Uh, across the country, non-conference games, but we got some conference games. Division two, we'll look at that maybe in the second half of the show, but we'll talk about swag in terms of Division one. see what type of surprises. We have a big shot, buzzer beater, yesterday on the women's side that we get to talk about in a rival matchup, big-time matchup. Stick with us, we can bring it back and give you that information right after this quick break. Support the Black College Sports Network so we can continue to provide you coverage. Go to myjbn.com slash support and be a part of the Black College Sports Network. Tell everybody they can follow their dreams. Supermarket sushi, really? No. Wait, Troy, you work here? I'm never not working. Like head and shoulder scalp shield technology, up to 100% dandruff protection, even between washes. Never not working, huh? Oh, Troy, you're such a good teacher. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Never not working. Never not working. Never, ever not working. Are you serious? Never not working. 
standard protection that's never not working. Head and shoulder scalp shield technology. Let's get back to strolling instead of scrolling. Before we can safely come together, we need the facts on COVID-19 vaccines. Visit GetVaccineAnswers.org so you can make an informed decision for yourself and for your fam. This is Dr. Bill with Inside the HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. Mike is out on the assignment as we were talking about that little bit of break. Um, that big shot I was talking about before we get into it, um, some other news there, uh, was between FAMU and Bethune-Cookman. FAMU went on the road to Daytona to play that rivalry game, and it came down to the last second shot. We ready? We want to jump in there and give them a shot of that, or we want to uh, discuss a little more before we jump into that? In 15 seconds, Doc, and I had that clip ready to roll. Oh, okay. As well, we're doing that, let me talk. Oh, you go ahead, Charles. No, I, I, I was going to mention in, in terms of news, and I'd be remiss if I didn't bring this up, but Black College Championships named our own Dr. Cavill, a senior con, uh, consultant. So I want to make sure – uh, we got that out there and congratulate Dr. Cavill in terms of, of, of being named that. And uh, this is a quote from Michael Coker. We're delighted to have Dr. Cavill join the Black College Championship team. He's a well-respected creative leader. And as an HBCU media pioneer, he will fit right in with this stellar opportunity for continuing to shape the HBCU landscape and assist in the leading of the Black College Championship to help break new ground. So congratulations, Doc. Thank you for that, Thank you for that. Yeah, I, I was a proud of the opportunity, consulted. I was really surprised to take it back, and I really want to give all those that have given me kudos of how much it resonated with a lot of folks out there that were saying congratulations. Uh, many people were saying that um, they were excited to see that it would happen, and I, you know, to do a great job. And just the reverence that people put out there on the announcement really shook me, and I took it to heart. So I'm going to go to work as I always do and what I know to do. And I do want to tell everybody, I really appreciate that acknowledgement. It means a lot to see that. Mm -hmm. With that, let's get into it. Um, as we were ready to go, before we do that, let me get into some of these cancellations. COVID-19 is serious. It's affecting basketball across the country. We've seen it in terms of some of the football bowl games. But as of today, we had Howard going to Pennsylvania. It's canceled. You had Mid-Atlantic Christian going to North Carolina Central postponed. Um, you had some forfeits yesterday in the SWAC. We'll get into that. Prairie View mm. was not able to travel to Grambling. Interesting to see. Will they make it to Southern? Nothing has been announced one way or another. So are they going to be able to get in there? So they start off on one on the women's side. Valley had the council. So they have a forfeit. So you already see COVID-19 wrecking shop in terms of the SWAC. It's going to be fascinating to see how that goes. We do have some games tomorrow. Obviously, a, a lot of uh, games put up there. Yeah, but though it could be it will stay outside of conference after the rival game, they'll travel to Florida International on the men's side. But then you have conference games, Alabama AM and Valley, Auckland State, Jackson State, Alabama State at Arkansas Pine Bluff. Prairie View is scheduled to travel to Southern, Texas Southern at Grambling. We'll get into those Monday games, but that's scheduled there. In terms on the independence, you have Presbyterian at Hampton. Uh, which is supposed to be on the day. Uh, so we'll get you some updates maybe throughout that game. North Carolina a t was supposed to go to Campbell. That game was postponed. Uh, you do have, uh, in terms of Thursday, UT Martin at Tennessee State. Uh, you have on the independent side, Presbyterian at North Carolina a t uh, on Wednesday. Independent games. Uh, furthermore, UT Martin at Tennessee State uh, is also Thursday. So it's fascinating to see if these games will get in and how it will affect moving forward. With that, let's see if we can get in to see a little bit of this magic that took place on Monday as the SWAT kicked off SWAT play in this two 12 member conference format.
That was sweet. That's sweet. <laughs> That's sweet. Everybody get fired. <laughs> Except for if you're a family rally. Oh, man, that's a tough way to get it done at home. Wow, I tell you, that was big time. Damn, Drew, you hit that. Drew, I'm going to go back to you. I had to let you say anything you put in work over there. What were your thoughts when you saw that shot? Did you did you talk a little bit? Did you did you throw up your hands? You know, what were your honest, your first reactions when you were like, oh, we got this one? Ralph Sampson versus the Lakers. 1985. Ooh. In the As playoffs. A fan, you had to go there, huh? Yeah. The, the, the turnaround? The, the, the half turnaround. He didn't even Ralph didn't get to turn around all the way. This was more of a turnaround right here. But uh that was just the first thing that came to mind because it just kind of reminded me of that over the shoulder half hook, half jump shot that that she shot uh shot just like Ralph Sampson. It was coming from a different uh angle, but that's the first thing I do. And look. Anytime we get a victory over Bethune, I don't care. I don't care if we out skeet shooting, marbles, uh, whatever. <laughs> we gonna take it because you know the nine years I had to deal with the 10, 10 years, nine football games I had to deal with. So it's time for fam you to get on a roll in anything when it comes to us and Bethune. Too bad the men weren't able to carry the it. momentum, though. Because the because Bethune's men did uh, defeat us. I can dig it. I can dig it. I like it. Let me give a shout-out to some of these listeners out here before we get into some of this basketball talk. I want to get into it. We're going to start with the WAC, uh, Division One, And like I said, we'll, we give you some – because there's a big game on the Division Two level. And it might surprise you because Shivery's not dead. Stick with us for that. We'll give you that update in the second half of the show. As we get into it, let's shout out to Chris Tucker, Chad Cooper uh, in the house, Ricky Burton, Hogan, Dr. Holmes is here, G Boom Holly, uh, PBN with a second forfeit. So it has been announced that uh, mm. they are not traveling to Southern. So Southern goes to 2 0, and they have taken down the Texas tornado, if you would. Uh, so um, tough way to get off the Scott for the cold. Regular season champions of last year. It'd be interesting to see what this looks like. COVID wow. is real, and we are seeing it raising the heads. Congratulations, uh, Kevin Crawford. Uh, in terms of my accolades, I appreciate that, Fred. Give you some love there. Herbert Bolden uh, is out here checking us out. Carl Moore, Karen Griffin, as always. Thanks for all the tough emails. I mean, great emails, I should say, with the uh, academic approach. You know I use that kind of stuff for class. So keep those coming, Karen. Steve Gaither is in the house. Great news that he's putting out there for HBCU game day. LaShawn Harris, she's happy that Jags are 2-0. Yes, they are. Fred winning. that is correct. They got it done by the second game forfeit. Unfortunate thing is no stats because of that. But you do get it in the record, But which means there may be some uneven stats in terms of the number of games. Obviously, stats are done by – percentages, so that won't be a problem on that side, but you don't get to uh, have that extra game and how that may affect individuals in terms of player of the week. So you had some great games by some Southern Jaguars in terms of what they did to Texas Southern. Will somebody's two game be able to outdo somebody's one game is one of the things that I think about in terms of the forfeit. Any additional thoughts you have on that, Drew? Yeah, I, you know, it's really interesting with the SWAC policy, uh, SWAC SWAC and SIAC put out a policy. Both the policies mirror each other. Big South has a policy a, a little bit different than uh, those conferences. Haven't seen anything official for the BAC and CIAA, although I'm pretty sure internally they have uh, released a policy to their coaches. But when it comes to the SWAC, considering eight teams still only make it to the tournament, will these games be the games that cost somebody getting to the tournament, or yeah, well, on the on the flip side, be that be the game that bumps somebody into the tournament. And how do how would these games affect seeding come tournament time? It's going to be interesting I, in the swag. I think that's the bigger thing. I think if a team is solid enough, they'll probably get enough wins uh, to be in the tournament. But what, what this will affect, as you said, is the seeding. So you what 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 is crazy about this? We kind of seen this in regards to last year at the NBA level. We had what somebody some would think is a later 
you know, Eastern Western division type game when the Lakers had to do the playing game in a new format, they were taking on Phoenix, uh, a Lakers team that just won the championship the year before. You can see something like that where you would get a Prairie View Texas Southern type matchup or a Prairie View Southern matchup in the quarterfinals, right? Versus seeing that in the semifinals or the finals. Right. That's that's a tough matchup. And in a lot of ways, that's a matchup. If you're one of those two teams, you're like, mm, I hate to start off the t- tournament with a team that is seated, you know, seven and eight, because the top eight teams make it still. And this time all teams will go to Birmingham versus having the quarterfinals on your home course. So that's a little different too. So to have an advantage of having your quarterfinals at home against a lower seed, now you go to a neutral site, which kind of evens that out. It's early in the tournament, so you're not necessarily going to have uh, a huge crowd there unless it's maybe one of the Alabama teams. So think about how that plays out also in terms of that. So this is something to keep your eyes on. So and, great and point in terms of seeding. Let me and go to the Now, and, and, and I'll be honest, I, I'm, I was kind of surprised that the sweat kind of took such a hard line stance because we've seen with this Omicron variant that people who have taken their shots and have done the booster, uh, they can still, you know, get this virus. So I was, you know, a, a little bit kind of taken aback, you know, in terms of their there's not two, being There's a, two a things, though, competing here. I'm glad you asked that point. There's two things competing here. You have the guidelines that the conference has to set up to make sure that everybody's playing by the same rule. But the conference can use the CDC five-day guideline okay because that's the national standard but that doesn't preclude a home institution to having a more stringent policy Hmm. right Right? it's like you had ability to high uh, you know have the admittance for certain students you have your nca you have your SWAT guidelines on what you're going to do but each institution has their own guidelines so prayer view could have a 10 day they could have the original 14 15 day that they are going by that has nothing to do with the SWAC. SWAC can control that. They got to get out there in terms of the games to be played, and they got to manage that. The other issue, before I let you, Drew, to jump back in here in terms of some great comments, is you also have the fact that now you are geographically spread out. Do you want to create the additional cost of a team having to reschedule a game? And what if that game is Texas, Florida? Florida, yeah, that could be an issue. Now you're talking just- about doing flights and rescheduling the flights. So sometimes it's just, you know, cost mitigation, uh, internal preparation, and so you got to make some tough decisions. So I think we have to be careful about saying how much of this is swag. It just gave you guidelines. We need to take a little deeper and say how much of this is prayer view and their own guidelines and their rules in terms of the functionality, which you would need to point to the athletic director and the decisions that he's making in his shop in regards to the medical framing. So we need to get what the policies at Prairie View in terms of mitigation. And mm. fortunately, it's been quiet down there in regards to what's going out. So we just don't know. Sure. And, 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 I, and I was going to say something about that, because if you look at it, Dr. Caville, both the CDC guideline and the SWAC policy occurred at a almost an inopportune time because these policies have come out over the last two, two and a half weeks when most of the decision makers on these campuses are not on campus. You know, they may have met Zoom. They may may not have met by Zoom. No, I'm going to tell you this. I know this from the SWAC for a fact. The SWAC does not make any unilateral decisions without the approval of the presidents and the chancellor. So if this was released, it's because the presidents of the SWAC and the chancellors voted for it and supported it. It was the presidents and the chancellors that made this decision. The SWAC office, what the SWAC office does in terms of rules and guidelines, let me make this very clear for those that don't. They will provide options. They will say, what will you all like to see? What is important to you? Playing the games, you know, financial stress, safety what are your priorities and you list them you tell us what is the most important based on those criterias we will come back with options and they'll give it to the senior women administrators they vote and provide a framework on it they will give it to the athletic directors vps of athletics they will have a vote on it then they send that and they have a final vote in terms of the presidents and chancellors 
and they ultimately make the decision. And what the conference does is they actually make sure that the guidelines that are voted on by all the parties involved are followed. They are the ones that are responsible for making sure that everything goes like what everybody decided they wanted to do. So and we I, need to be I, careful because I've over the years I've heard a lot of folks talk about SWAC office, this and that, and they're not understanding that the SWAC office, much like the NCA, they provide the carrier and make sure people follow the guidelines, but they have very little power in terms of implementing that. Let's go to the break and then we'll come back on the other side. We'll give you final thoughts if you have any final thoughts on this great discussion of dialogue. And the members out here in terms of the lab listeners are getting some great information as well and putting some out there. So we'll cut back and then we'll get into a little talk because we do want to get some action in terms of what took place. We teased you with that great play that had FAMU winning the game at the buzzer. But let's take this break and we'll be right back after this break. Your ad could be ran here. MyJBN.com backslash support. MyJBN.com backslash support for more information. Itchy. Squirmy. Scratchy. Family not getting clean? Get Charmin Ultra Strong. Go get him. It just cleans better. With a diamond weave texture, your family can use less while still getting clean. Goodbye, itchy squirm. Hello, clean bottom. <laughs> <laughs> we all go. Why not enjoy the go with Charmin? From novice to aficionado, find yourself here. High quality cigars plus personal customer service. Slow Burn is Waco's only mobile cigar lounge, featuring a meticulous curated collection of premium cigars. Visit our website www.slowburnwaco.com That's www.slowburnwaco.com You see Head & Shoulders has scalp shield technology protects against flakes even between washes. It's never not working. Kind of like us. Number 15? Never not working! I don't like this one. Me neither. Let's get out of here. Head & Shoulders scalp shield. Never not working. <laughs> It's like a loot machine. Going around town, trying to get it down. It's like a loot machine. This is Dr. Bill with Inside HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington, Charles Bishop. Mike Washington is out on the side. So we have the adjunct. No, he's a visiting clinical professor. He's <laughs> had off on the paperwork. Drew is in the building. We'll put it that way, Professor Drew. And we have, obviously, Professor Bishop standing on top here. Let's get into some of these scores at least. You had Southern women on the women's side. The series not there. Let's start with the women. Southern, 10th spot over Texas Southern University. Cynthia Cooper was not on the sideline. So that was interesting to see. Southern got it done in terms of that matchup. But you had maybe a slight surprise, Prairie View. Coach Poop Q, uh, looks like she might be back in the basketball business. She got it done against Grandma, 65-57. Uh, in terms of that matchup, on the road. So you'll have a Prairie View, Texas, uh, a Prairie View Southern matchup uh, this tomorrow, Wednesday. So that'll be fascinating in terms of what goes on there. And then obviously Texas Southern at Grandma. Now, on to Florida A&M, but we told you about that at the buzzer. As family wins 70 to 68 to get it done there. Alabama A&M takes it to Pine Bluff, 58 to 48. Alabama A&M continues on the women's side to make those next steps. Look like they'll be in here. I told you about earlier, you did have the forfeit of Valley forfeiting a game to Alabama State. Uh, so F Alabama State goes in 1-0. Any thoughts on those first matchups? I guess we got into the FAMU game there, Drew. Uh, any additional comments that you had on that matchup or you wanted to stick about just how big that win was FAMU over the Nah, I'm going to be uh, – I'm going to be fair. I'm going to get it in. Alabama A&M uh, women did not get off to a good start in the non-conference season. So 
It's n- nice to see them uh, get that early season victory against uh, UAPB. And, uh, you know, anytime Prairie View can go into, the, into uh, Louisiana and, and get a victory, men, women, whatever, it's, uh, it's, it's a good victory for uh, Prairie View. So. You know, when I take a look at it, I, I think the, uh, the one that really kind of made me uh, kind of uh, – peek over there was Alabama and and UAPB. UAPB uh, is going to be one of my sleeper teams over there in the SWAC West. Uh, they had a, a pretty good um, out-of-conference uh, schedule or, 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 or a good showing, I think, in the out-of-conference. When you, you got three scores for UAPB that are in double digits, and they have a nice little four-game win streak. They had uh, double-digit wins over USM and a nice victory over Tulane over there on the women's side. So the UAPB uh, Alabama a and game was – a uh, really interesting one to me. And when you take a look at the women's side of the ledger, you know, when you take a look at Jackson State, Alabama State, and Alabama a and they're going to be fighting it out, I think, over there uh, in the SWAC East. And then you had Bethune Cookman uh, that's uh, coming over there. There's a pedigree program as well. Uh, you have a lot of parity over there uh, in, on, on the women's side of the ball in the SWAC. And then I think, you know, Texas Southern is trying to get back in the mix with the tie of bridges and, and Nia Mitchell, uh, both leading the way for Texas Southern. Prairie View, I think they're going to be right there in the mix as well. And then Southern, they're just, they're consistent. Uh, when you take a look at their uh, their scoring, I mean, you just go right down the roster and somebody's contributing. That's been the hallmark of Carlos Bunches' teams uh, for the past few years where they play hard defense and they just get scoring from so many different places. So good win last night for the Southern Jaguars, Southern Lady Jaguars over Texas Southern. And I need y'all to help me out with something since I'm new to SWAC basketball, you know. Uh, traditionally, SWAC has played the double round robin where everybody played each other twice. Do, do y'all think that the with the schedules being already uneven before we even deal with COVID, some teams not playing each other home and home, do y'all think that's going to affect how we see some of these standings come out both on the men and the women's side? Definitely. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. The problem is, is we won't really find out until the end how it affected. Yeah. You know, going in, you know, you'll have your preseason favorites. Um, we'll get into it when we look at the men. You know, part of that was Texas Southern being the preseason favorite, and they took an L on the road to Southern and got beat up pretty good in that matchup. I mean, it got down to four points in the second half, uh, but Southern controlled most of their game and then pulled out late and won by 13, mm-hmm. 63 to 50. Now, the other thing that I think is going to be interesting that people may not want to talk about is – not only are you forfeiting some of these games, but you're not playing. Texas Southern came in uh, on a long rest because they had, you know, matchups postponed, counseled uh, because of COVID, whether it was them or the other team. But that's the fact that you're not practicing playing. We saw last year with North Carolina Central, a team that is usually uh, printedly really well in the MEAC, certainly well coached, and we saw that up and close, <laughs> right, on uh, why not us in terms right. of how that affected him. And the coach was very open with how he thought that affected him with his lack of practice, not being able to get into it, not to say that he made an excuse for um, the schools that were able to get it done, but he's saying how it affected his team. So that's another thing to keep your eyes on. Again, I told you about Southern moving to the men's side, Southern over Texas Southern, 63 to 50. You had Alabama A&M make a significant statement, 70 to 50 over Arkansas Pine Bluff on the road. Pine Bluff uses plays really well. Obviously, a new head coach there, coach that uh, made his team running at, at, during the game. It's gonna be interesting to see what he's gonna continue to do now. It may not be the players; it may need to look at itself in terms of what get done. Uh, whether it's recruiting better players, uh, what have you, we'll see that. I'm not saying that it's particularly X's and O's. Uh, obviously, he was good at what he did and why he got the job. But something to keep your eyes on: Alabama State. Uh, gets it done against Mississippi Valley State, 84 to 75. Without Mo Williams. You know, yeah. Without Mo Williams in terms of what's going on there. So it's fascinating to see there. Obviously, we talk about the forfeit prayer view to Gramlin. So interesting matchup. And then Bethune Cookman got a little revenge in terms for their women as they get it done at home against FAMU 66 59. So interesting to see. New coach uh, on that program. We'll get to see some of these matchups uh, moving on throughout the conference. But Going to you, Charles, what was 
statement game that you saw here? Was it that Texas Southern Southern, or did something else stand up? Alabama ain't on Pine Bluff, or was it a couple of them? What did you see out of this week? Definitely Southern Texas Southern. That was the standout game for me last night. Uh, Texas Southern, uh, we all know, everybody in Slate knows that you have to do that Texas two-step with Texas Southern and Prairie View any win over perennial uh, pedigree program like uh, Texas Southern, uh, that's one that you kind of raise your eyebrow at and say, okay. Uh, and we know that uh, Southern is going to be scrappy. They they were, you know, ravaged by injuries last year. Looks like they're on solid footing this year. Uh, they're going to be a team that's going to be right there in the mix. And, and you know, th th that's just who they are. They, they get after you on the defensive side of the ball. They're already tops in the nation in terms of creating turnovers. We saw that last night with the Texas Southern game. And they were able to get a huge win over Texas Southern. Great points made. Great points made. Let me go to you, Drew. Uh, like you said, you to the swag now. Now your eyes turn here. Obviously, still watch a lot of the SIEC Division Two. Uh, again, we'll get a chance to touch on that because it was a big game that I want to keep reminding folks. We need to make sure that we're sharing the love in terms of HBCU uh, to follow some of these other big time matchups. And we'll let you know when they go on so you can maybe peek around where places where you necessarily don't necessarily have your fandom, I guess just to say it. But in terms of swag matchups, Anything stood out to you in terms of the first set of games that were played on Monday to kick things off on the men's side? Just, just to avoid the redundancy, because yeah, Texas Southern Southern was a uh, shock, a shocker to me. But uh, Alabama State, Mississippi Valley State. Reason why I, why I pulled that game out is we got to think about it in this what I call this modern era of high profile ex professional athletes who are coaching in the SWAC. Everybody has to remember, Mo Williams, the coach of Alabama State, was the first one to come as a former athlete back in this, in this new modern era before Coach Prime came to Jackson State in football. Mo Williams came to Alabama State in basketball. Now, well, Cynthia, Cynthia Cooper was at Texas Southern as well. So. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 uh, right. Right. Well, mm -hmm. let, let, let me correct my statement on the men's side. Mm -hmm. we, we, we'll say that on the men's side. So we know Alabama State because they didn't play any non-conference games last year, really didn't have a chance. But this year, you know, Mo Williams, sec second year, maybe he's gotten the opportunity to start getting his players in, start getting the system in, right. and start doing things. And just like Coach Prime, Mo Williams – has been away for personal reasons. Also, I believe he had uh, he had a child that was been born over the last uh, few weeks. But you know, in a, in a similar vein, he had to step away from his program to deal deal with some personal issues. So Alabama State being able to get off on a good start. Let's see if they get on that roll in the swag. Yeah, I think that's a great point. And when you look. That way, the other thing is who they were playing was Lindsey Hunter, Mrs. Valley, who struggled in side about that but to your point uh, that is fascinating to see is the next step for Alabama State in terms of the talent on that team and they got the big win over Texas Southern people forget at home last year uh, when Texas Southern was trying to battle ultimately it came down to Jackson State and Prairie View in terms of going undefeated but Jackson State showed in the tournament that that talent was there so this is going to be very early in the season it's fascinating and that brings us to the fact that we haven't talked about Jack State at Alcorn, which is a game that's coming up. will be on Wednesday in terms of the rivalry game that was pushed there. So that's going to be one that uh, fascinating to me. As we get into that, so let's take a break, let me quick, and then quick, we'll quick. come back and let you get in there because I want to get into some of those next matchups that are coming on Thursday. So we'll be back and get you to talk a little more about that. Let's take our last break. We'll bring you into that fourth quarter. Women's basketball, they do the fourth quarter. I know in men, they do two halves, but we're going to stick with the fourth. Thank you guys for what you do for HBCU Athletics. This is a fantastic avenue for, for, for all of us. This is our ESPN, so we, 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 we love what you guys do. Brian, AD, Roy, all you guys at BCSN, we really appreciate what it is that you guys, you guys do for us.
200 years, Montgomery, Alabama has been making history by people who had the courage to stand up for change. Today, this riverfront city has been reborn, embracing the past and looking forward to the future. From the National Memorial for Peace and Justice to the stage of the Alabama Shakespeare Festival, this is where history was and is made. We are proud to call Montgomery home, and together, we can be the change. This is Dr. DeVille inside the HBC Sports Lab. Let me shout out to Ryan McGinty. He put out there Larry Smith for Alcorn State. That's right. Mean green. As they say, and as Charles pointed out, it, you know, if you got to talk to him off the court, he wasn't like this. So he must have played at a different level for him to earn that nickname because he just would have never known. Great point made. Let's turn it around a little bit. Oh, did you want to do a shout out, Charles? Did I, did yeah. I, did I, did I, did I interrupt let, let, let. Let me shout out my Murrah Mustang alumni. Lindsey Hunter coaching in Valley. Uh, you got Mo Williams coaching Alabama State. Mo wasn't there last night. Another Murrah Mustang takes over for Trey Johnson. So shout out to the Murrah Mustang. So alumni. Why not? Why not? Why not? <laughs> love, love, listen, love going around. Love going around. I got you. I got you. Well, we have um, Valley hosting uh, Alabama A&M in the matchup on Wednesday. Uh, we also have, what is that, Pine Bluff hosting Alabama State. You have Texas Southern traveling to Grambling. You just heard on here that Prairie View will forfeit to Southern, so that game mm -hmm. will not take place. I told you Bethune-Cookman will play on Wednesday, non-conference game, fam, he was off. And then you got the rivalry of uh, Mississippi with all corn and Jackson State. Charles, let's start with you. A lot of people interested in that matchup for multiple reasons. Uh what are your thoughts on that game? Oh, uh, yeah. We well, get to see this Jackson State Lady Tigers uh, basketball team uh, back in action. You know, uh, starting conference play, Amisha Williams, uh, she's already leading the conference in scoring and, and, and rebounds. Uh, Deja Robin, they are tremendous uh, one-two punch. So, you know, it, it, it's going to be fascinating watching uh, uh, the Swag East with Jackson State, Alabama A&M, Alabama State, and Bethune Cookman. And then you're always going to get that fight out of Texas Southern, that fight out of Southern, that fight out of Prairie View. And like I said, keep an eye on UAPB. I think they're going to be right there in the mix. Joyce Kennerson is back and healthy. Uh, and if you remember Joyce Kennerson at Texas Southern, she was one of the leading players in the league uh, uh, for uh, a couple years ago. But now she's healthy for UAPB. I think she's going to add some tremendous scoring punch uh, to that UAPB uh, offense. So this is a lot of parity over there on the women's side of the ball. Yeah, I'm interested in that matchup because Alabama State uh, has always played really basketball. They took a little dip, and they were right back in the mix last year, surprising a lot of people as they ascended to the top of the conference, not able to quite get it done in terms of uh, the regular season or the tournament, but they were right there. They were the team that beat uh, Jack State in the um, regular season. Obviously, they had another loss that took them out of place of tying and getting a co champs for the regular season, but took it right to the buzzer in the tournament with Jackson State got it done to their credit. But I want to shout out Alabama A&M women. Uh, yeah. Because I would have had some big wins coming in their non-conference, but they won that game on the road 58-48. to So you're right. I'm fascinated on the women's side by Alabama State and Pine Bluff. Pine Bluff does not want to go down 0-2, particularly right. with the two games at home. Exactly. Uh, so that's going to be fascinating and a tough one. And you know Alabama State, uh, as they are, they're going to come in there like some Hornets, and they're going to try to get it done. So they rebound you to death. About that man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they'll get on there. With that being said, I'm going to go to you, Drew. What are some of the big matchups that you're seeing that you're prepared to watch this Wednesday in terms of these games that I talked about? Obviously, Prairie View at Southern. Uh, on the women's side, that game will still take place. Obviously, we talked about the men having a forfeit, but Texas Southern and Gramlin at Gramlin. Uh, you Big matchup here now. Uh, neither one of these teams want to go down 0-2, so somebody's going to be fighting to try to get in there, get that first win to feel better, certainly if you're on the road for Texas Southern. It's important if you can split. We know how that is. And you're at home. You don't want to get the first two losses, as we talked about Pine Bluff on the women's side. Alabama State at Pine Bluff gave you some love there. All corner Jackson State. Alabama A&M at Valley. 
uh, that's fascinating. The question is on that one, is that also going to be a forfeit in terms of Valley not being able to get off the slide? You said they had to forfeit there. But then you got on the men's side. Alabama a and is rolling. Can they make another statement, get off to a great start on the road, getting first two against Valley when you talk about that? Jackson State wants to make a statement, especially as they've seen the carnage going on on the men's side. Uh, Alabama State, Arkansas Pine Bluff, I will tell you there, that's going to be fascinating. Again, Pine Bluff does not want to go 0-2, both men's and women's, so that's fascinating. Texas Southern, Grambling on the men's side, we told you how important that is. Uh, Prayer of you. Obviously, Southern uh, will be a forfeit. With that being said, men's or women's, what draws your attention for the Wednesday game, Drew? Uh, can I go outside the SWAT conference? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the game I really want to see is uh, see what happens with Tennessee State and uh, UT Martin. You know, Tennessee State is a mm, team that we don't work. talk about uh, too often here in the uh, – on our show because that they, they're one of those forgotten teams, so they don't play in one of the traditional conference. But Tennessee State, five and seven, uh, trying to get off to a good start in the Ohio Valley. You talking conference. about the women? You talking about the women uh, yeah. in terms of being five and seven? To their no, credit, right. to your point, I'll give it back to you. Is that uh, the women are two and zero oh conference yeah. play with a big shot by a guard out of Houston that shot a, a half quarter that went in to get the win after hitting three free throws at the end of the game when she was fouled to send it into a credit to uh, what she was able to do, Caleb, there. She uh, was the prime and got on ESPN in terms of the top 10 uh, shot when she hit that. Uh, game winning shot at the end, but go ahead, Drew. And on. I, and uh, the correct that, that was the men who are five and seven, the women are actually seven and six. So, uh, but Tennessee State, both on the men and the uh women's side, to see if they can uh, if they can keep it if they can keep it going, they, you know, as they open up conference play, you know, they had a hell of an out of conference. Now it's time to step me into into conference play. You're right, because men had. Hadn't been able to get into conference play yet. Yeah. Yes, yeah. So, uh, but yeah, that's why I want to see what are these teams for real in the Ohio Valley Conference. Before I shove it back to Charles to see any additional thoughts he might want to see about some conference games, because I want to keep my eyes obviously at Norfolk State on the men's side uh, and shut it down. But they were rolling. They had nine wins, six, seven of them Division One wins, so they were playing really well. Uh, several of those were against HBCU talent. So if I did do a poll, they were top. Uh, in the poll. In fact, let me talk a little bit about the poll that y'all did trains this week. I'm just going to give the top one. People can go uh, as you put this out on the website for the end of the week. Division two men, you have the top two teams as Fayetteville State, Virginia. I'm going to sneak in number three because they're out of SIC. Benedict, eight and five, eight, nine, and three, respectively. That's three and oh, two and oh, and six and oh in terms of the conference rates. Side, that's on that's women. On the men's side, Division two, Fayetteville State, Virginia. And Benedict as well, eight and five, eight and three, nine and three. In terms of what you're seeing there, uh, Division One rankings: Norfolk State six and four. Uh, men in terms of what's going on there, Southern is four and seven. Texas Southern two and seven. Obviously, a big uh, win they had against Florida. I'm sure helps them. Uh, Benedict on the women, and I know you want how a matchup coming up here. So I'll go four deep: ten and four, nine and three, eight, nine and zero. Oh, that's for Benedict, Lincoln, Pennsylvania, Tuskegee, and Savannah State. They're 6 and 0, 2 and 0, 3 and 0, 3 and 1, I should say, 5 and 0 in terms of conference play. Doesn't Tuskegee have a game with Savannah State coming up this week, Drew? That, that would be tomorrow, Dr. Cavill. Uh, that game takes place at uh, 6 30 East and 5 30 Central in uh, Tuskegee, Alabama. Savannah State coming in uh, 9 and 0, Tuskegee coming in uh, 8 and 2 on, on, the, uh, on the season. And right now, on the women's side in the SIC, th th there are four teams who seem to have separated themselves from everybody else. Tuskegee and Miles on the uh, west side, Benedict and Savannah State on the east side. So it's going to be fun if you're a women's college basketball fan in the SIC. W one thing I want to note about you, uh, th those polls, the BCSM uh, rankings that you read. Uh, at the BCSM, one thing we did not do, we did not count the games against lower divisions. So even though we right. don't know our focus nine and four uh, for our 
for our computers, they are only 64 because we only counted Division One games versus other Division I One like opponents. That. I'm glad you pointed that out. So, yeah. you know, when, so, when somebody say, hey, no, no folks, nine and four, you just said they were six and four. That's why they're listed at six and four in their, in their poll right there, Doc. Uh, and I'll turn Great. it over to Charles, but there's a couple other small mid major games, as you like to call them, that uh, I wanted to point out for people. But we'll turn it over to Charles first. No, before you do that, I want to keep with you, and then I'll let Charles have some closing thoughts and okay. on those mid-majors. Let's show them the love. But I did want to point out the rest of the polls in terms of Division One. Obviously, Division One wins early. You have early with Tennessee State, as you talked about, 6-6, six 2-0. Six, and oh, Conference rates out of the OVC. Hampton, 5-6, and 1-0, oh, Big South. Then you get into Morgan State, 6-4, and four, uh, no conference games. They start on Saturday, Cobb State sitting at 3-5. and five. And then Arkansas Pine Bluff coming in, as we saw, and we talked about why it's important for them to get that win tomorrow. They were ranked five, three and six coming in there with some of those uh, big Division One wins. We've seen this last year with Alabama and m on the men's side getting on the hot start and then really stumbling conference race. Interesting to see what that looks like there. Uh, Talladega Rust, make sure we give the NI uh, women some love. Yeah, Talladega 10 and three, Rust at 10 and three. Uh, Charles, make sure you give a shout out. And I got Russ mentioned it. I, I, I got to make Filming sure. Five, five, make sure I get five. Make sure I get five. The Lady five, Bearcats. Five, doing my job. Doing my job now. Russ out there now. We put him out there. Yes, Lanky, indeed. Lanky in there right after Stillman, five, five, eight, and three. And then we'll go ahead and give Florida Memorial some love. They sit up there and, and check us out, too, in terms of the Magic Man down there with music. Seven and five, five and oh, a lot of things there. What were the points that you wanted to make sure we told people to keep their eyes on so, some Big time division two NIA matchups coming up this week. Group. Hey, hey on, on the on the men's side in the NAIA. Hey, you've got Talladega, who's who's a top 15 program. I believe they were ranked number 12 in the uh last uh, NAIA poll. They played number two Loyola on this Saturday, and that's a conference matchup, and that's in Talladega at uh three o'clock Eastern. And also uh, same, same conference, so the state's conference, Steelman plays Faulkner, which is another top 15. No, excuse Ooh. me. Steelman is 15. Faulkner is receiving votes uh, in the latest NAIA poll. So you got two great teams on the men's side in uh, NAIA. We already talked about uh, Savannah State and Tuskegee. Let, let, let's go over to... Uh, to the CIAA on the women's side where Elizabeth City plays... Uh, what, excuse me. Uh, skip that one. They play West Virginia State. Florida Memorial plays a conference game. They're number two in the conference. They played number three in the conference, who is Ave Marie. That game is Saturday, and that's a four o'clock game. Last one, number two, Florida Memorial in the Sun Conference plays a number one team in the, in the Sun ah. Conference, and that is Thursday. And they play the Southeastern Fire, and that's at five thirty on Thursday. Don't say we don't give you all the HBCU love right here. Thank you for giving that little dime and that pass back. Let me pass it to Charles. Any final thoughts as Drew just, man, lit it up in terms of some of those matchups that you need to keep your eyes on if you call yourself an HBCU sports fan? Big matchup tomorrow, I think, the Jackson State Lady Tigers, regular season uh, champion and the uh, tournament champion from last year. They're back on the hardwood getting ready for uh, conference play. Taking on all corn. If we remember last year, uh, they stubbed their toe against Alabama State early and then went on an incredible run uh, through the season, getting the regular season championship. So, uh, you know, uh, got some WNBA prospects, Amisha Williams, uh, in the court conference play tomorrow. So. Yeah, I was going to wonder why, how you were going to tie it in in regards to why we're going to keep our eyes on that. Because uh, all corn straight braves, much respect, they, they're not going to have a chance. Jack State. You, you could have kept that trying to play that big up. In terms got, of a got a rebound. Got a rebound. Got a rebound. I like the way you did it for the whole team. I like the way you made sure that there was a good point that some of some potential WNBA talent on the court. That's how you do it. If you're going to make a shout out, you got to make it relevant and you did that. That'll do it for us. We'll close on that. Thank you for listening to Inside HBC Sports Lab. Make sure you share our podcast with your friends and colleagues. I am Kenyatta Cavill, the Dean of HBC Sports Coming from inside the lab in the College of HBC with Mike Watts and Charles Bishop. Again, we want to thank you for listening to Dr. Mills Inside HBC Sports Lab with Mike Watts and Charles Bishop. Told you Mike was on assignment. Be back with us on Thursday. We'll be here at 6 o'clock. We'll get into some of the matchups in terms of what took place on Wednesday. 
And then we'll start telling you what to look for on Saturday because you have both the SWAC and me in action in terms of what's going on there. We'll sneak out and tell you who won that game between Savannah State in terms of uh, Tuskegee. We'll keep eyes on uh, see where we get that. But that'll do it for us. Shout out to Professor Drew as he gave us the love and gave us the insight uh, today. Follow me, Dr. Kenyatta Bill, on Facebook and Instagram. That's D-R-K-E-N-Y-A-T-T-A-C-A-V-I-L. Again, it's D-R-K-E-N-Y-A-T-T-A-C-A-V-I-L. Inside HBCU Sports Lab 1 on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube is inside the HBC Sports Lab. Dream big and continue to move forward. We will talk with you soon. Professor Drew? Of course. Professor Bishop? Lecture! Dismiss. Hey, Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New to Year, say it. Bishop, everybody. Happy New Year. Get a good one.